thanks, Chrissy. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming along to listen to the legend story. Uh, thanks to Jackson and Stu for the opportunity to present the legend story again this year. Uh, always like to lead off with a bit of a gag slide, and it's a pretty easy one this year, given uh, the uh, negative nickel sentiment. You don't have to. You only have to open a newspaper to see that uh, nickel is very much. Uh, on a downward uh, spiral at the moment, but uh, I think that's probably a best example of an investor trying to weather the, the nickel market at the moment. Uh, our, my talk today is around legend and how legend is navigating this, this negative nickel sentiment. I will be making some forward-looking statements, so please take time to read the disclaimer. A quick overview of legend from a corporate level. Uh, we've got a current market cap of uh, just north of 49 mil at 1.7 cents. I think today we touched two cents and we've seen some buying in Legend over the last uh, 10 to 14 days and I'll explain why. Nominally it's too cheap. Our cash position as of the end of December was 11.6 million. You can add another 3 million to that as Chrissy touched on. We've received our R&D rebate so that puts us in a really, really strong cash position to going forward to whether this this downturn in the nickel market. Very importantly, no debt. Our shareholder structure, 63% of our shareholders, uh, top 20 is owned by um, 63%. Our top four own 54%. Our major shareholders are Mark Creasy, also a joint venture partner, and IGO at 12.9%, also a joint venture partner. Uh, I talked to, you know, being, being cheap, uh, all those directors listed there on screen, uh, starting with Hilary McDonald, then myself, and most recently in the last uh, week and a half, Mark Wilson, our chair, and Tony Walsh, our co-sec, have all bought on market. Uh, so we're, we're genuinely backing ourselves. The investment highlights for, for Legend, we are, and we don't shy away from, being a, a dedicated nickel copper cobalt explorer. We've got a dedicated team of science-driven explorers, and I'll talk to that science today during the presentation with a track record of discovery. So Derek Waterfield, our EM, he's in the audience today and he's at the booth, so please come along and have a chat to Derek. The, the tenement location, we've assembled a great tenement location in the Fraser Range, north of, of Nova Bollinger. The only two players in the belt are IGO and Legend. The Mawson Mineral Resource, I'll spend a bit of time on that today, that's a really strategic resource. and. Definitely a foundation to grow. We, we think it's, it's far from finished there and, and we've got some compelling evidence why. Uh, we've got a pipeline of targets in our ground in the Fraser Range. Uh, octagonal, I will focus on today, which we think is a real sleeper. And well funded, like I touched on, north of 14 million in cash. And as I always touch on, 90 cents in the dollar goes in the ground at legend. So why the fall in nickel? I think if you've, uh, you would have missed this, the only way you've missed this is if you've been sleeping under a rock. Uh, you open up a paper, like I said, and it's all about the negativity around nickel. So what is driving that negativity and the, the fall in the nickel price? Well, it's been an increase of supply of this class two nickel from Indonesia, coupled with this lowered uptake of EV demand. And that's resulted in that third bullet point there, which is this surplus for nickel being pushed out by another two and a half years to, to 2028 when we're going to see it in deficit. And this deficit is where it becomes really important. Uh, this looming deficit from 2028, 20, is it all going to be filled with, with class two nickel um, in a decarbonised future? And that's a big question. You can see. There's a lot of uh, talk around bifurcation and will bifurcation happen? Unsure, but there's a, a big political push for this bifurcation to, to take place between uh, carbon intensive derived nickel and uh, sort of ethically green supplied nickel, which is the sulphide producers here in jurisdictions like Western Australia. This is a really, really good slide and, and it's, it's it talks to that, that deficit, that looming deficit in 2028. Where are these discoveries going to come from, these new nickel discoveries? The discoveries, as you can see there from that graph, they've effectively dropped off a cliff since 2010. And the next big nickel discoveries are going to occur 
in these underexplored terrains, like we are in the Fraser Range, these underexplored, undercover terrains, where you've actually physically got to apply some genuine science and thinking, roll up your sleeves, have a bit of grit about you to explore for these style of deposits. But I think the third point on this slide is uh, the most pertinent. Regardless of the nickel headwinds, a quality class one sulphide asset produces good money. A perfect example of that is, is Nova for IGO. In their December quarter, uh, some 40% of their EBITDA for the company has come from Nova, Nova Bollinger in the quarter. So that just shows they're mining lower grade stopes at the moment and obviously higher costs at north of uh, $4 a pound production cost. They're still printing money out of that. So a good quality sulphide asset uh, does print money. One of the things that I get, I've, I've shown this graph, graph to a few people and a fair few investors and they, they're all very much, like they say to me, WTF, uh, where the fines? And that's pretty much where legend comes into the equation. Like I said, uh, we're in one of these underexplored terrains, uh, being the Fraser Range, east of Kalgoorlie. Uh, the Fraser Zone sits 250 kilometres east of Kalgoorlie. We're primarily exploring for these nickel, copper, cobalt style deposits, which I touched on. And as always, I like to touch on the infrastructure here. You can see in the southern portion of our tenure, you've got the Trans Australia Railroad linking up to Kalgoorlie, down to Nickel West, the Campbell, the Campbell to Concentrator and down to the Esperance Port. So uh, the Mawson deposit is a mere 30 kilometres from that railroad. The Rockford project itself, like I said, we've got 2,500 square k's uh, in what we believe is one of the most underexplored nickel belts in the world. Uh, the Legend team has displayed the ability to find these mineralised intrusions and convert them to resource in the, in the case of Mawson. We believe there's more to be found and, and that's, that's our job and that's what we're, we're doing with our systematic exploration. Completely science driven, there's no outcrop in the Fraser Range. So you, you're compelled to roll your sleeves up, like I said, get into the geochemistry, use all the tools at your benefit, including seismic, which I'll talk to, to try to find these haystacks and then delineate the needles which are, we're looking for, which ultimately would be a next Nova Bollinger. The last point on that uh, I will touch on is the rationalisation of ground holding. Anybody that's followed the legend story over the journey for the last seven years would know that we had over 3,000 square k's now. We've started to shrink that and that's been a deliberate act. As we've worked through this project, we've uh, been able to upgrade some ground and downgrade others. So therefore we're reducing our, our footprint and conserving capital. I'll touch on octagonal. Firstly, this is our uh, project that we spent. This is our project that we spent most of our time on uh, in 2023, namely targeting a an I-shaped feature which sits on that red line on the screen there, which comes up the the western side of the the Fraser Zone. That structure links Nova, Sylvanite, and octagonal. So. Nova and Sylvanite are the other two deposits in the belt. You can see there it's an I-shaped feature for the geos in the room. That's a fold interference pattern. Octagonal, like I touched on at the top, we very much believe this is a discovery in the making and we're seeing all the right ingredients uh, over the last 12 months to, to confirm our belief. We drilled four holes last year into octagonal. We confirmed that we're seeing the intrusion continue at depth as predicted by the 3D seismic. Importantly, we're seeing an increase in this higher MGO component and the nickel tanner, which I'll talk to in the next slide. Importantly, we're getting some really good reconciliation between our 3D seismic and the drilling, which gives us confidence to plant these holes in the right spot. You can see all those conductors there in the yellow, they're actually all related to mineralisation or proximal to mineralisation in drilling. These were delineated with a high power fixed loop survey that we completed there in those white squares, white rectangles. We got some really encouraging results and obviously some conductors on that that need to be followed up. But what we did take away was that this survey needed to be extended. It's telling us outside of this, further to the east, through that magenta zone, that this trend continues. So we'll be out there next month, back end of next month, continuing this fixed loop survey with the aim of uh, honing in on targets for the next round of drilling. Like I touched on, this petrology we received literally two weeks ago. 
This confirms what we'd seen in hand sample, that we're dealing with what we call money rocks, so these higher MGO rocks, in this case a lerzolite. And you can just see there, right, you don't need to be a geo to understand percentages. You can see the amount of nickel in the sulphide in these rocks. Our job now is to find more of these rocks and where they focus the mineralisation, but we genuinely think it's a sleeper and we're seeing all the right ingredients for the next discovery. On to Mawson. Mawson is our deposit that we put a resource around in February last year. It was our maiden resource. In terms of, of endowment, it's at just over 28,000 tonne of contained metal. The resource is very shallow. It's between 65 metres and 300 metres and remains open at depth. Metallurgy has been completed, excellent metallurgy, so this is high Fe MGO ratio. This material runs straight through the Nova Bollinger plant. It's the ideal feed blending agent for the, uh, for the BHPs of the world. We've completed seismic reprocessing. That's led into targeting, which I'll talk to in the next slide. And we believe that this uh, resource is definitely a foundation on which to grow. We're far from finished. Um, with, with expiration there from, as you'll see in the next slide. But the last point is, is, is really important. It's a strategic mineral resource. Nova's running out of all 150 k's down the road. They've got less than three years to go, and, and this is uh, compatible ore for that plant. So more to be found at Mawson, and this we, may, may seem like we're not doing a lot, but we've, we've been reprocessing the seismic. We've been looking for where does this intrusion come from that's carrying all the mineralisation. The reprocessing of the 3D seismic has identified this compelling target zone, which marries with the structural analysis that we've completed. So we've come up with the same zone. Independent of that, we've pushed out this data to Sensor, and they've uh, completed some machine learning, some artificial intelligence on the data, and completely non-confirmation bias independent of the data that we've generated in-house from a structural and a seismic uh, perspective they've identified the exact same zone. So that makes a very compelling zone for us to test. This zone sits here, you can see it on screen. The chonolith, we believe, comes through this break in the Mawson fault, and there seems to be a zone of what is interpreted to be intrusion up against this big D9 conductor. Anybody that's been following legend would understand that we've got massive stratigraphic conductors at Mawson. They can literally hide anything. We drilled 31 metres of massive sulphide grading, 2.6% nickel, 1.5% copper. Couldn't see it in downhole EM. That's how thick these, these graphite conductors are. So you could literally hide anything in there. Just finish up on, on regional. Like I said at the top, we've got 2,500 square k's, but we're rationalising that ground. We're continuing to build up the pipeline of targets. Some targets fall away. Others come up to be the next octagonals and hopefully then go on to a, a mineral resource, i.e. Mawson, and the ultimate aim, delineating the next Nova Bollinger. The expiration schedule quicker than in my last two minutes. Um, we've got a bit on. We're kicking off with the fixed loop surveying at Octagonal next month and drilling off the back of that. We've got drilling planning for Mawson and regionally we're continuing with our EM surveying. So like I said at the top, you saw a bit of buying in legend over the last uh, 10 days to, to 14 days and, and, and basically that's because it's just too cheap. If you look at the look through value of legend uh, at at sort of 1.2 at the bottom, uh, we've got an in-ground resource worth multiples of our current market cap and we've got 14 million in cash. So I'm not surprised to see the buying. I'm happy to dip into my own pocket and do some, as was Mark Wilson, as was Tony Walsh, as was Hilary McDonald. So we're backing ourselves, chasing these nickel deposits. We've got a dedicated team as I talk to. Uh, the mineral resource at, at Mawson definitely has upside to grow. It's a strategic resource and the final point there, we're, we're funded to execute. So very much watch this space. Thank you, Chrissy. Thank you.